Finally, there are some industry standard charging solutions that are actually good. It's about time. My engineering life will be so much better. No more designing weird custom solutions. With USB Type-C, no more trying to plug in the wrong way and flipping. <laughs> no more trying to charge a big old battery with two amps or half an amp. Or with wireless charging, no more fussing with cables and connectors at all. Bring it on. Except with one small problem. I'm a digital design expert. I don't really know how to implement any of these new awesome charging standards. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Never fear, my friends. I've got Heberly Ahotlin, product definition engineer who has been working with Worth for eight years here to help me with some fantastic kits that will make implementing these new charging solutions a snap. Let's charge ahead. Get it? All right, let's go. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about USB Type-C, wireless power charging, and a new DC to DC educational board from Worth Electronic and Texas Instruments. Hi, Eberly. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you. I appreciate it very much that you invited us to talk about these topics. Okay, so we are talking about a variety of super cool ways to deliver power today. And one of the coolest power delivery methods that I've seen lately is USB Type-C. But Heberly, why should we consider USB Type-C in this realm? So I think we're all accustomed to the standard USB 2.0, the standard plug. And well, it was great for many years. It's become the most ubiquitous type of plug out there. Yeah. And it can power your phone. It can power your iPad. It can power a number of things. But today you have a bigger phone. You have a bigger iPad. You have bigger devices to power. And you don't even have the time to figure out if you plugged it in the right way the first time. Right. So the advantages of USB Type-C is that it knows what you are trying to power. It gives you more power to power all your power-hungry devices. And finally, you don't need to worry about whether you plug it right side up or upside down. It's agnostic. So it's, that's the greatest advantage of it, I think. Sure. So Heberly, what exactly are we looking at here? Today, we're going to be talking about, like you mentioned, three distinct ways to power devices. And the first one that we want to talk about is a way for us here at Worth to offer people some education in addition to some technology that they can develop. And so in partnership with ST Microelectronics, we decided to develop a USB Type-C development kit, which comes in a very nice box with a full-on solution that First, we'll help a designer basically test and develop quickly within a few hours a full solution for a scalable consumer-based or industrial-based application. So I think this is one of the coolest solutions that we've come up with because it can be both educational as well as can be implemented for our customers and for anybody out there who's interested in learning about USB Type-C. Okay, so what are the specs now? What kind of watts are we talking about here? It's tiered. It's designed in different ways to power devices according to the need of the device in question. So for example, we have the standard 15 watt, five volts, three amp solution, but it can be scalable and it can go up to hundred watts, 20 volts, five amps in other words. So depending on what you need, the system can stretch out and provide more power. Excellent. So, Heberly, what does this buy me as an engineer? What kind of features are we really looking at here? Let me walk you through what the kit includes and its key features. So, first and foremost, it's a plug and play solution. So, you don't need to spend any development time. You can test it. So, yeah, it's fantastic because you open the box and plug in a couple of things and voila, it's working. However, there are some things that I think would be interesting to notice so that people know what they're really getting as a benefit. We offer three boards, which in general, it's a great benefit because most application reference boards only come with one board. In this case, we have three. So you have the ability to develop a 40 watt solution, test it and develop it. But you also have two additional boards that provide, one provides a source power of about 100 watts and a second one that can sync power up to 100 watts as well. This means that you can send over 
a path up to 100 watts and receive 100 watts on the other end. So this enables people to scale it from its standard power all the way out to its maximum power. And in addition to that, they don't need to do any development for the firmware. It's already been done. And in addition to that, we have some preset profiles, power profiles. For example, many devices out there already use 5 volts. So we already have some jumpers and connectors. We can set up a 5 volt solution, but we also have a 9, a 12, 15, and 20. So it's flexible and modular. I think that's what's very cool about it. Cool. Okay. So if I'm ready to get started, what kind of components am I looking at here? We have in the board, the BOM provided. So you have the list of all the components that are there. There is also some information on our website, as well as on Mouser's website, as to how to go about connecting every one of these components. And what we offer from us, I think, is a solution that's sufficient because we offer caps that have very low ESR, inductors that have very high efficiency, and connectors that are very long lasting. So those are what we offer from Worth as an advantage to our customers. In addition to that, the controller from ST Microelectronics is superb. It's, as I mentioned before, no firmware required to develop it. You need to tweak it. And in addition to that, it's flexible, it's scalable. So I think those are the biggest benefits, the best benefits that we can offer together in partnership with ST Microelectronics. And the end result, I think, is a very compact but very functional solution. Cool. Okay. Now switching gears a little bit, another cool power solution that I've seen lately is wireless power. But why should I consider wireless power charging for my next design? This is something that I'm very excited about because I've seen it from its infancy to how it is today, where it has been on the forefront trying to develop newer and better technologies around this. And I love it. It's a great technology. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So wireless charging is good because sometimes we just don't have the time to figure out how to connect things. Therefore, it makes a lot of sense to just put your phone or your iPad or any other device, your Samsung device, on a table and let it charge. So wireless charging technology enables you to do that. There is a number of products out there already, so I think it's just the beginning of this technology. So what we've developed now, it's a kit in partnership with Infineon that goes up to 200 watts. Another scalable solution, another way to deliver power that enables flexibility to the end user. I would say that for the designer, there are significant benefits here, as we did with the previous design, such as one, it's plug and play. Nothing to do. You can just plug it in and it'll start working. But we do in the same kit, both the transmitter and the receiver. Now, what does this really buy me as an engineer? So what it buys you is the ability to quickly develop something that can be put into production in the consumer market. And it comes with all the schematics, bombs, build materials, everything that you would need to build this and scale it and change it according to your needs for your specific PCB board. Having said this, it doesn't end there. It can be modified to a lower power scheme. And if you are a little adventurous, you can try even to push it outside of its typical range. So whereas uh, 200 watts is what it's specified to, wireless charging is flexible enough that you can probably go plus or minus a little bit of that power and you can still develop something interesting. At least you can see the capability of this technology currently and for future years. Another great thing that Infineon was able to integrate into this design is the ability to connect IoT devices via an I2C interface. So it's not only the analog part, but also the digital part as well. Nice. Yes, that's great. Okay, so if I'm ready to get started with wireless power charging, where should I start, Heverly? A lot of people are unaware of this technology, despite the fact that it's been around for probably as long as we've been alive. But I think the best way to start learning about this technology is going, for example, to our website where you'll find a collection of app notes. So Worth Electronics has created a number of educational tools to teach about the technology. You can also find this on Mouser. You can find all these links and information. We've partnered with them, so we have all the information there provided. And in addition to that, Infineon themselves has a very good library and information about the technology itself. 
So if you want to brush up on your physics, which is basically the bottom line of this technology, you right. can go get your app notes and be up and running in a couple of days. Excellent. All right, Everly. So what if my audience is a relative newbie to power management? What would you suggest there? So we've learned so far about two interesting technologies, but it does take a little knowledge already to be able to uh, delve into them and understand their benefits. So if you're a newbie and you want to learn more about what it takes to design a good power supply, which is essentially what we've talked about so far, two flavors of power supplies, then you can take a step back and look at the theory behind a power supply. And for that, we partnered with Texas Instruments, a great company when it comes to creating educational resources. We've created in partnership with them something we call the PMLK or Worth Edition, which is an acronym short for Power Management Lab Kit. And as its name implies, we're talking about a kit that can be used in a lab to test and understand how a DC to DC converter works. It's really cool. I could probably spend a whole hour talking about it, but I'm just going to keep it short. So let's say, for example, let's go back to college time when we are all in school trying to learn theory from a blackboard or perhaps a set of slides. How boring, right? Right. But imagine if you could have in front of you this board, which is actually pretty inexpensive, I have to say, and with the ability to poke at things, see things, see how current flows in, where to connect voltage, how to sense temperature, how to measure efficiency with a board. So that's what we develop here. Uh, a student can sit there for hours investigating the benefits of a particular design of a DC to DC converter. So let me take you through some of the benefits of it. So it's designed around the buck topology and it has two channels. Each channel works independent of the other one. Okay. So you can select to work with a particular input and output voltage, which you can set, or you can go through the other channel and work with a different input and output voltage. In both cases, you can do efficiency measurements, changing the inductors without having to unsolder anything. There are three inductors soldered on each side, and you can, by means of jumpers, change from one to the other one. And it also comes with a temperature sensor already built in, as well as a current sensor. This way, you don't even need to worry too much about having a very complex set of tools on your desk to do all these measurements. You can just take voltage measurements, which you can convert back to current or temperature. So for a student, it takes a minimal amount of material to be able to have a complete report on the efficiency of these devices. And people might say, well, okay, so this is cool, but I don't know where to get started. Yeah. No worries. It comes with a book that was developed with a professor that we are in partnership with in a university in Italy who uh, worked on a specific lab sessions. And if you go through the book, it goes a step by step and it tells you in the end, how to take all this information, analyze it, and get a, something that would make sense in the form of a report on efficiency for the device. So it's pretty cool, I think. Excellent. Okay, so Heberly, what does this really buy me as an engineer? What are the nuts and bolts benefits with this kit? I think what it buys an engineer, it's two things. One, if you're a digital designer who spends most of the time dealing with ones and zeros, but you are now tasked with the work of maybe designing your own power supply for your system. You can brush up using this kit and learn all the benefits of a particular set of magnetics to improve your DC to DC power supply. So within a few hours, you can pretty much characterize what would be the best topology to power your system. And if you're a student and you've never done anything related to power supplies, this could be a project that could help you get an interview, get an A on a class, and potentially help all your classmates to understand this concept too. So it'll make you popular. Cool. All right. I love it. All right. Well, they always say that the details are in the schematic, right? Do you have a schematic you can show me? There is a schematic there. It's also available on our website, on Mouser's website. And in addition to that, it's also available on the Texas Instruments website. So you can get all the information about this kit there. 
And it basically takes you through the same information that I already mentioned. We have two controllers independent of each other. You can choose to go through DC to DC converter one by just a means of a couple of jumpers or DC to DC converter two by means of the other set of jumpers. And it will take you through step by step understanding how to do current sampling measurements, how to do efficiency measurements, how to do ripple current measurements. In the end, understanding how to collect this data to have a final picture of what's better, which magnetics help me more to improve the efficiency of the system. And you have two choices. Another great thing, you cannot fail. You can see from this schematic, it actually has an e-fuse. So if you overrun it with too much voltage or current, it will shut off. So there's no way of killing it. So it's nice. fail safe. All right, Heberly, this has been a lot to cover today. Can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, sure. So today I took you through some of the more educational side of worth electronics, which is providing information to engineers both to develop and to learn about different technologies. So we talked about ST micro USB type C that we evaluated and created with them. And in addition to that, we talk about the worth electronics Infineon 200 watt wireless power charging kit. And finally, we talked about the Texas Instruments, the PMLK Worth Edition Buck Converter Board, which is great for learning about DC to DC converters. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Heberly. Yeah. And don't forget, you can find all this about these three kits. You can find all the information you need about them on Mouser's website, on the Worth website. And of course, with our, each of our partners, you can find the information as well. So feel free to log on and take a look. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about USB Type-C, wireless power charging, and that DC to DC educational board from TI and Worth Electronic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. Can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube keyword EE journal. <laughs>